Hey, how are you doing? It's Alan here from Looking for Warriors, and I want to talk about Tom Cowan, Dr. Tom Cowan. Now, let me tell you a little story about Tom Cowan. He, initially, he wanted to get into medicine. So he was, I guess it was an intern, I don't know what the, the term for it is, but let's say an intern in medicine with family doctors, with GPs. And I don't know if that's the same in every country. In Ireland, it's GP, general practitioner. It might be different in different countries. But he was in, uh, in the intern and he was involved in this. There was a baby got a vaccine, a regular vaccine that, that all babies get. And when the baby got the vaccine, there was an adverse reaction to the vaccine. And I think the baby died. I'm not sure exactly. I think the baby might have died. And he... And recalling it, he's saying that the doctors never admitted there was a vaccine, even though the baby was clearly healthy when it came into the surgery, the doctor's surgery, and it died after taking the vaccine. And the doctors never admitted that it was a vaccine death. He said there's no way it could have been, uh, could have come from the vaccine. And they didn't record it anywhere. So as far as statistics, it never really existed. It never really happened. And he said this really shocked him. Really, really shocked him. And he was... I think it was just a moment, you know, just a moment for him. And from that moment, he said, hey, I didn't get into... Didn't get into medical... Didn't get into the medical field to hurt babies. And who could blame him? Who could blame him? Who would want to get in the medical field to hurt babies? So he got out, out of it for a while, but he read some books and stuff like that. And he decided to get back into it later on, based on the books he was reading. And while in medical, so he went back to medical school. So while in medical school, he says his teachers didn't like him. When I heard this, my ears opened up. My ears really opened up because he was asking the wrong questions. He was asking the wrong questions. And he was asking questions about current medical thinking. He's asking questions about vaccines. And the teachers hated this. But, and you can understand that the, the, the point of the school is to take in the facts and regurgitate them back out later on. It's not to ask questions. And, but his teachers didn't like the way he was asking questions. But later on he went in and he, he just felt like the current medical systems weren't working for what he wanted to do. So he had to recreate the, me recreate the medical system that he was using and create his own medical system. That's why he wrote books about how things work. And he certainly, I'm not, I'm not in the medical field. I don't understand. I love listening to Tom Cowan, but sometimes Sometimes him and Andy Coffin will be talking and they're just getting, it's just so medically complex for me. Maybe it's just me. It might be fine for you. But it's just so medically complex for me. I don't fully understand what they're saying, but I still like to listen. I don't fully understand everything they're saying. Um, because there's some things they'll talk about, you know, how the heart is about different properties of war, how the heart is in the pump and, and all that kind of stuff. And, and that stuff, okay, I understand, but there's some more complex medical areas to get into, which I'm just not, like, is, 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 does a virus exist, does a virus does not exist? I'm just not medically qualified to answer those kind of questions. And I guess you don't have to be medically qualified, but I just don't have enough medical information to answer those kind of questions or even understand half of the arguments, to be honest. <laughs> so I don't know. But I will say one thing. Um... Dr. Tom Cowan says there is no such thing as a virus and I respect him. He has a great mind. He asks great questions. I respect him. And he says that when people came off the boat and they all had scurvy, it would have been very, very easy to assume that they all got a virus because they all had the same sickness and they were in a cl close proximity to each other. But the issue wasn't the a virus. The issue was they didn't, they had, didn't have enough vitamin C. So they weren't getting the nutrients they needed and they all got sick. All of the people weren't getting the same nutrients and they all got sick. And it's possible with some 
that may be the case as well. I think Dr. Cohn, Tom Cohn makes the arguments that we should be eating more fat and meat and nutrient dense foods that we're not doing. We eat a lot of carbohydrates, we're just flushing all the nutrients out of our body. And I understand that and I get that. But the thing about the virus is I have had times where in my home, you know, the kids go to school and when they go to school, they get sick. It's just the way it is. A lot of kids in proximity, they get sick. And the reason that I can't take all of the, the virus stuff he says on, even though I have huge respect from huge respect, but I can't take it all on because I have been in the, I've been looking after my kids when they get sick. So they come home, they get sick. One of them gets sick. We had a vomiting bug once really, really bad, like constant vomiting and dizziness and you know, stuff like that. Stuff where I was holding basins on them under my kids' faces because they get sick so often and they couldn't actually even get it in because they were just like left and right and really dizzy and they couldn't even get it in the basin. And one kid would get it and then another afterwards another kid would get it like a few days later and a few days later another kid would get it and another kid would, would get it then I would get it um, and, and it seemed to get worse every every time when I got it like I got the worst version of it but it did really look like a virus to me moving from one person to another so I have to I have to go with the what I see I have to go with what I see, even though I don't like to go with the mainstream narrative, but I have to go with what I see. So that would make me think that there is some kind of virus or something. I'm not sure. I don't have all the medical knowledge to argue that properly. Um, but I, just from my own visual of what I see, I did see one person get sick, then another person, then another person, then another person, which looked like a virus moving from one person to the other. Although obviously I can't see a virus and I can't, but I get the concept. So I have seen that, but at the same time, I understand what Dr. Tom Cowan's talking about. When all those people came off the boat and they all had the exact same Ill illness, it would have really, really looked like there was, they just were in close proximity and got a virus. But they all, they all were vitamin deficient is actually what it was. It was nothing to do with a virus at all. And it's possible it's possible that we're all, just with modern food, we go to the supermarket and we buy these kind of things packed up with artificial colorants and, and sweeteners and everything else, and sugars and whatever, carbs, and maybe we are all nutrient deficient. I found that I was, certainly, I know for a fact that I was nutrient deficient until I started eating more fatty, high, dense vitamin packed foods and I find that I'm a lot better now although if I go back to two days of eating crisp sandwiches and chocolate I find my health goes right back like that I find my health is a lot better without it and it affects me straight away and I think the reason it affects me so badly is because years of abusing my body with food just all this same crappy food all the time and there's a point in which your body just can't take it anymore. But I think the truth is somewhere in the middle because I have seen, I have seen viruses. I don't know, it could have been anything. I'm just talking about what I see with my eyes and it could have been anything. It's very possible that everyone in the house was, was deficient in vitamins for sure. But just the way it moved, it really did look like a virus and it's very, very hard to know. But I think that the thinking that Tom Cowan has come up with, especially when he's talking about the heart, especially when he's talking about the properties of water, especially when he's talking, even everything he says about viruses as well. I think this is gonna push on and people are gonna find it's right. And I'm just trying to square this circle. Well, I saw this thing going through my whole family and and how is that, it seemed like a virus to me. But may, you, maybe I don't have the medical qualifications to to know, or even the knowledge, not even about the qualifications, about the knowledge, you don't have the medical knowledge to be able to know. I've never seen a virus through a microscope, or I've never, but it just looked like a virus moving from one person to another. But it's really, really interesting. What, what really got me pricking up my ears was, his teachers didn't like him. His teachers didn't like him because he was asking all the wrong questions. 
And isn't that going to be the same in all of us? Isn't that going to be the same in all of us? What do we do? Do we ask the wrong questions? Do we ask the wrong questions? Or do we just shut up and get through the course and get to the end and get the results? That's a big question. That's a question only one, you can only answer for yourself. Because some people I know, this is probably me. This is most likely me. I'm the person who has to ask the wrong questions because it's just burning up inside me. And I have to ask the wrong questions. And for other people, it's better just get your head down and get through the course. Even if you don't believe half of what you're being taught. But you can regurgitate it up on command. So that's all that's needed for me. You don't need to believe it. So that's the big question. You no know, teachers, do they allow you to ask the wrong questions? And I don't think they do. I don't think they do. I don't think they want us to ask the wrong questions. But I'm so, so happy. I'm so, so happy that we have people like Tom Cowan and Andy Kaufman and all the other people I've mentioned before who are going to ask all the wrong questions. I take the flack for us so we can get to a better place. This has been Alan here from Look For Warriors. Do me a favour, subscribe to this channel.